Hello, and welcome to the first installment of Advanced Automotive Concepts Instructional Video Series. Today, we're going to be installing our Oracle brand Halo Kit into a Lexus IS300. But don't worry, all the steps taken here today will apply to any Halo Kit for any vehicle. The tools that you'll need for this installation are a Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. Everything else is included with your Oracle Halo Kit. You also need a conventional oven, gas or electric, we'll come back to that later. To begin this assembly, we're going to remove the two Phillips screws at the bottom of the headlight. Some headlights have up to four screws that secure the lens to the body of the headlight. Once these screws are removed, the only thing holding the lens to the body is a glue seal around the light. In order for this seal to become viscous enough to remove the lens from the body, we need to heat it. For even, consistent heating, nothing beats a conventional oven. Gas or electric, either would work fine. When placing a headlight inside the oven, we're going to do a test fit with the oven off. The headlight should be centered in the oven, away from the lower and upper heating element. It should be centered between the walls as well so that no metal is coming in contact with the plastic that could damage or warp the plastic. We're going to bake these at 215 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it warms up, we're going to put the light in here for about 15 minutes. We're going to pull it out and give it a shot opening up after that. With the warm light now on the soft towel, we'll begin by prying at this front bottom tab here and slowly removing the lens from the housing, careful not to get any glue on the inside of the light. As we pull it away in one slow, consistent motion, most people believe that if a headlight retains moisture, it's due to a poor reseal. In actuality, it's usually due to them being opened improperly. With that being said, we're going to go back and check any areas on the headlight that may have been damaged during lens removal. While it's still hot, we're going to go and bend those tabs back into place so that you don't have any kind of problems with moisture down the road. With the lens and body assemblies now out of the housing, we could start by pressing down on the chrome housing and removing it from the light. If you plan to paint these chrome housings, now is a good time to do so. And since the customer did order these to be painted black, we're going to bring them over to the paint shop and show you how we spray them. Hi, I'm here to show you how to paint your factory housing for your headlight with common tools that you can find at any car park store. Here at AAC, we use a paint gun. Now, unfortunately, most of our, uh, of our customers won't have access to a paint gun. So I'm going to show you how you can paint your headlight housing with a can of black spray paint, a can of gray primer, as well as sandpaper that, that you're able to find at the same store. Okay, the first step of painting your housing for your headlight is prep work. Now, in order to get the paint to stick to your headlight of your housing, what, what most people are going to want to do is take your sandpaper that you bought earlier and scuff down the inside and all the areas of the headlight housing so when you paint everything sticks. Now here at AAC, instead of using the sandpaper, I have the, the option of using a blast box. After I've taken my housing out of the blast box, the next step is to prime it. And before I do prime it, I want to make sure that all the sand and particles are off the inside of the housing. So I've already used solvents earlier to remove them, but to make sure I have a cloth here, I'm going to wipe everything down with and make sure it is smooth. Now once that is done, I have a paint booth here. And if you don't have a paint booth, spray somewhere where there's no dust particles and, and you can let it dry you know, for a period of time. And after you have that, my next step is to use a can of gray primer. The reason why I want to use gray is I'm painting the headlight black. So therefore I want the, the, the black paint to stand out. So after I shake it up and make sure that the can is rattled correctly, I'm going to begin spraying. Now I would stay back about 10 to 12 inches and make sure my coats are even. The key is do many light coats and not heavy coats. And now that I've let my primer dry, I've let it dry for about 15 minutes, it's now time to apply our paint. Now today I've chosen black, you can paint it any color you wish, but uh, since I'm doing it on a black car, I'm using black paint. Same way that you did your primer, make sure the can is shaken up, and then apply small, even coats, about 10 to 12 inches from the back of the housing. The key is to do very light coats instead of heavy coats. The reason that is doing light coats allows the paint to stick without dripping. Heavy coats allows the paint to drip and not really cure. Now that the paint's been given time to dry, we can go and install our rings. Each one of these Oracle rings is specifically made for each individual vehicle. So the shape and contour should match the shape and contour of the headlight. We'll begin by installing the high beam ring. We'll simply side it right into place. Now once it's matched up, we're going to use a small piece of painter's tape to secure it in that position until we apply our epoxy. Very similar with the low beam ring. I'm going to slide it right into place. 
and secure it with a piece of tape. This step varies slightly between each vehicle, so refer to your instruction manual that came with your Oracle Halo kit when you approach this step. Now with your ring set in place, you can get your epoxy that comes with your kit. You're going to mix two equal parts of the blue and the red. There's a small applicator here. When you mix the two parts, you're going to add small dabs of epoxy right behind the silicone ends on either ring. Again, this step is going to vary between vehicles, so please refer to the installation guide. Now with the ring set in place, we can install the housing back into the lens assembly. We do so just by snapping it right back into its original spot. These wires that are going to go to the inverter are going to be routed through the back parking lot hole of the housing. We'll drop these in, just thread them right out the back. Now with that completed, the housing is ready to go back into the oven and be resealed. It's important to point out, to get a good reseal, the keys are heat and pressure. The light just came out the oven, so it's obviously already hot. Now all you have to do is apply pressure. You could do so by just laying the hot headlight down and pushing down so that all the factory glue goes back into the seal. Or you could use a couple things around the house to help you apply pressure. In this case, we'll use vice grips. You just clamp these all along the edge of the light, and we're going to leave these about 15 minutes let the light completely cool, and that way the glue has time to set and harden. Now with the headlight reassembled, all we have to do is hook up our power supply. We do this by taking the wires that go to the rings and connect them to our power inverter. Simply connect the small connectors on the back, and then you take your red and black wires and wire them to any 12 volt source. We suggest using the parking lights in the car, and that way you can turn them off and on from your factory headlight switch. Now you have a working set of halos, and the job's complete. Thanks for choosing Advanced Automotive Concepts. Be on the lookout for our next video where we'll show you how to install our Oracle Xenon Lighting Kit. If you have any additional questions or would like to make a purchase, you can visit our website at www.aacstyle.com. You could also call our 800 number. It's 800-407-5776. Thanks.